Hi everyone, so this is a review for chapter 9 revision quiz set 2. Okay, this is a new version. So we have a few input today, uh, 20 responses. But from here I can see we can discuss question 8, 9, and 19. So let's move straight away to the question. Question 8 says you have a student which attach an object of mass m to the end of a string of length l. Okay, then so that you create a simple pendulum. Then you have another student called student y, and this student attach an object of mass m. Okay, it's the same mass as student x, but this time the string is four times the length of the length of simple pendulum of student x. So student Y have a longer pendulum compared to student X. So now they want you to compare the period of both pendulum. So how do we do this thing? Well, you have to recall that the period for a simple pendulum is 2 pi L over G. So for the period of student X, it will be 2 pi over capital L over G because the length of the pendulum is capital L whereas for the period of student Y that would be 2 pi over 4 L over G that will means by 2 pi square root of 4 square root of L over G then there will be square root of 4 will be 2 and you have 2 pi L over G. So that will mean by the T, the period for student Y is 2 times the period of student X. Okay, so the period for the pendulum of student Y is twice the period of the simple pendulum of student X. Okay, so if you see the keywords, <coughs> it's the same, that will be wrong. Uh, student X is twice of student Y, that's the opposite. Ours is Y is twice of student X. The period of student X is 4 times, 4 times that's wrong as well. The period of student X is half the period of student Y, half. So that would be correct. Why is this correct? You just need to shuffle a bit the equation. It just means that the period of student X is half. Of the period of students wise pendulum so the answer is donkey okay, so the, that's it for question 8 let's move on oh before I move on they say here you have uh, the same mass but if you happen to change it to another mass will it affect the period again the answer will be no okay things here and things here they both of these are not affected by mass of the pendulum ball. Okay, so by changing the mass of the pendulum, you won't cause changes to the period. Whether you put a golf ball or a ping pong ball, if you neglect air resistance, if it's in the vacuum, it should have the same period. Okay, because it's not affected by mass. As long as you keep the string constant in length. Okay, so that's it for question A. Question 9 asks, for a particle undergoing simple harmonic motion, which of the following graph represents the variation of velocity with displacement? Well, uh, to do this question, you have to slightly recall what's the equation that relates velocity and displacement. And if you are able to recall correctly, the answer will be V equals to plus minus of omega square root A square minus x square so this is the equation and from this equation we want to transform it into a vx graph so how it looks like well this shape is probably you probably haven't learned how this shape what does this shape represent this equation what kind of shape does it represent but you know it's definitely not a linear curve because this will mean by v is equals to negative uh, k 
kx. That's the meaning of this equation. And this doesn't look anything like it. It has a square root, it has square, it has something else times something. So definitely no. Well, if you look over here, this one is definitely v of cos of something something related to x or negative sign not cos. Well, does it make sense? Uh, then this one will be v is equals to cos of something something x. So just by seeing the others, you know that this is incorrect, this is incorrect, this is incorrect. So from a process of elimination, you know this is the answer. So this shape is actually an ellipse. And if you look at this equation here, this is a general equation for ellipse. And as you can see, there's square and square two things over here. So it's sort of uh it's sort of having the same structure as this equation here. Therefore, this v against x equation is actually form a ellipse shape on the graph. Okay. So that's it for question nine. Okay, so we have question nineteen. Question 19 says you have a particle and this particles perform an oscillation. Okay, oscillation in this case when think of it as HHM. So it's without damping. Well, just like our case, the case that we learned, there's no damping. So which of the quantities here is not constant for an oscillation? For the oscillation, if there's no damping, means by there's no energy loss. So what is constant? Well, uh, force is it constant? Force is actually negative kx, where this is this is force constant. Okay, so the k is constant, but x is it constant? This is not constant. So if x is not constant, your force will also be not constant. Okay, if you cannot imagine. This F here represents the restoring force actually. So if you have a horizontal spring mass system, and this is your mass over here, if your mass is here, then let's say this will be x equals to 0. Then if you stretch your mass to this point over here, then your x let's say let's say this is considered the amplitude then the other side you probably have x equals to negative a so you'll be constantly oscillating from here to here and come back Something like this. You keep on repeat this cycle of oscillating between the amplitude and the negative uh, maximum and the negative amplitude. So if you're oscillating, that your a, your x will be changing all the time. Your x changing all the time, therefore your force must be changing all the time. So force will be not constant. So should we have our answer already actually? Okay, uh, but let's just review the other options left. Well, total energy is E equals to half m omega square a square. So if you are not doing anything, you are not changing the SHM whatsoever, you are not changing, then the mass will be the same. It will be constant. Then because you are not changing anything, then the angular frequency should be constant as well. Same for the amplitude. It will be constantly oscillating at the same amplitude. Reducing amplitude will be something like this, which is not found in this case. Because there is, this is damping, but we have no damping. That's why our amplitude is also constant as well. Well, the next thing, angular frequency, it's constant. Okay, if it's not constant, then the SHM that you learn will probably look something like this. It looks phase out, then very, very close together. Okay, that would mean why you change your angular frequency. But no, the SHM that you see, the sinusoidal wave is perfect. 
So it means that the angular frequency is constant. So constant, constant, constant. The answer is false, being not constant. So that's all for question 19. And that's all for chapter 8 revision quiz set 2. Thank you very much.